Hello everybody, hope that you are doing very well and welcome back to another crypto video for you all today, almost a technical analysis, <laughs> where I am going to be covering in today's video a recent poor trade of mine. Okay, so I want to cover this trade, explain, you know, what went wrong and how I can improve upon it. Uh, going into the future uh this is a uh, you know a losing trade off of the psychological aspects of trading you know like my emotions getting the better of me um you know and for me personally I like to view myself as a very like robotic trader where I do not let my emotions get the better of me so for this to happen is uh you know something that I want to like highlight at the end of the day, we are all human and it's, it's, it is impossible to totally block it out 100% of the time. So, you know, cover aspects of this, you know, what went wrong in this trade, how I can look to improve upon this. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to do this for you all on YouTube so you can, you know, really understand the process that I like to go through as well as, you know, I really believe that you can learn a lot from this video. So uh, I hope that you thoroughly enjoy this one and you, you know, benefit from it. So uh, welcome. Um, so yeah, firstly, I suppose what I like to do when I t do my trades is, is I journal all of my trades. Okay, you know, I've been doing this uh, many, many, many years now, but I still love to journal all my trades. And I believe, you know, as well as, you know, I guess you can view journaling almost like a diary where you might track what you're doing in the day in, 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 in a diary as, as well as in trading. I like to journal all my trades, what went well in the trade, what went bad in the trade as well as I gather statistics from my trades, uh, so you know why I took the trade, what happened in this trade, whether it went right or wrong, and then you know gather statistics of what the market conditions were like when I took the trade, uh, what minute was it, you know, a lot of data that I like to extract from this. So then, I believe that that is giving me like the confidence when I take my trades because I have just statistics behind how often I'm winning and losing these trades. So. And so a real focus of mine when I'm journaling. But on top of that, uh, you know, I believe, you know, as, as a person, as well as a trader in like general, you can never, ever be the exact highest you can get. There's always, always space to improve. OK, that is, you know, as I, as I said, in life, you can never be at the best of anything, in my opinion. There's always something to learn from someone else. And that's why I live by the motto of uh, everybody around me is better than me in some way. And that in that I can learn from them. Um, and, you know. I believe that's a good motto to, you know, live by. Uh, and I also like to try and emphasize this in my trading. I believe that I'm never, ever, ever at the very top of my game. And I always strive to put in that little bit of extra effort and, you know, improve every day. And I believe journaling is a big part of that. Um, so what I like to do when I take a trade like, like this, which I believe is in my standards is a poor trade. Um, what I like to go through is a few different steps. Okay, firstly, I would like highlight uh, the, well, the original reasonings why I was taking the trade were was my thought process correct while taking the trade, uh, and you know really you know kind of scrutinising the the actual entry and and the uh, execution of the trade, and then moving on to what went wrong. Okay, so I would you know go into the trade, look at you know was I right in taking this trade? Uh, you know, in obviously then you know, I have the benefit of hindsight when I go back and view this. Was I right in taking this trade? What could have I improved on the execution, if anything? Or was it just one of those things that in trading it is at the end of the day a game of probabilities? Um, you know, I win this trade more than not. Is it just one of those cases that it was a, it was a losing trade? There wasn't anything I could do about it. That does happen at times. So uh, then I would move on to if there was something that I'd done wrong in my execution, what went wrong and then how can I improve? So that is like a kind of a three part step that I like to go through. And the, the last part of if there was something incorrect in my execution, then the, the final part of highlighting what went wrong and then using that uh, to, to know what not to do in the future sort of thing. And then that is your step of improvement. OK, so it's really, really important to really understand why you lost that trade okay because if you just go through trading okay if you just go through trading 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 taking a loss moving on to another trade taking a win taking a win taking a loss taking a win taking a loss taking a loss taking a loss taking a win taking a win you know you never go on 100 win streaks you never go on 100 lose streaks so you know but there's in this process if you do not review your winners you do not review your losers then essentially you, you're never going to really be able to get a high win rate. You're never going to really be able to be consistent in trading um, because I feel that you don't know where you're going wrong. And if you don't know where you're going wrong, maybe you're happy with this, you know, with, with a 40% win rate. But wouldn't you prefer a 45% win rate if you could try and remove some of those losses, for example? Of course you would. So that's why it's so important to highlight to yourself where you went wrong and then how you can work on that and, and you know, eliminate that from your part of, of, of part of your trading. Um, so yeah, what what happened to this? The, what happened to me in this trade? So it was an original trade. I will talk you through this one. So it was an original trade where I was looking for shorts uh, around the daily close at this level. Okay, so around our daily close, going into the seventh. Obviously, on the sixth, we had a really nice rise. 
I would like to add upon this that uh, for me, um, this was off of a, you know, I must admit, I have been on a very healthy win streak recently. So I've been taking, you know, quite a few wins. And uh, I guess, you know, I, I really don't like it when I do this to myself. But, um, you know, I guess my confidence, my ego was extremely, like, inflated somewhat at this point. And, you know, you go on a, you go on a nice win streak and you do, you know, uh, you know, it's, 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 not an, it's not a pretty aspect, but you, you get kind of this ego. And uh, yeah, definitely I was influenced by this, you know, taking a lot of wins. I was overconfident, That's I, I, somewhat overconfident, I suppose. Um, but we were off the back of this rise on the 6th and we're obviously coming up into the daily close on to, you know, going into the, to the 7th, okay? And I was looking here for a short, okay? The reasons why I was looking for a short is because I had a high time for a higher time frame bias as well as some of the predictions that I had made recently that we were going to come up and take the weekly, move the weekly and then come back down in price. So I was somewhat influenced by just my overall bias of, of Bitcoin and then my, uh, my own technical analysis uh, that saw us doing a high before pulling back around this, you know, 7,350 uh, uh, region being our weekly. Um, and let me talk you through what happened here. OK, so if we just scroll back in time. So here we were going into the uh, rise into the weekly close. And this is the trade that I took. OK, so it was uh, a short position at 7,444 and the reasonings for this so you can kind of get into my brain is um, Bitcoin has a habit of putting in the high within the first 20 minutes of the day so I will short for this <laughs> for the stack gave so that was my entry at the time as you can see the original one was 7,397 and that was at uh, well I probably entered that about you know 18 minutes past and then posted it shortly after in the champions group um, and what happened was, OK, so you have to go down onto like the minute chart here, but about at 21 minutes, OK, Bitcoin pushed up again and, and took me out of my short position. So I did take one loss on that trade. Uh, but then I so that was this one as a losing trade. But then I entered into it again, like literally one minute later and took another short. Oh, I got in slightly high and this would have been at around uh, uh, 23 minutes past 12. So it was within 25 minutes. Obviously, I was looking for the high to be put in within 20 minutes of the new day. Uh, but the high was actually put in after 24 minutes of the new day. And that was our high on this candle right here. As you can see, the time at the bottom was within that you know 20 minute candle. But the high was actually 24 minutes. OK. So that was the reasoning why I where where this trade, you know, obviously it started relatively well okay because we got our decrease in price etc and the people also getting in on that one which is pretty nice to see but nevertheless that this is where I originally started went wrong so i feel that i've in my opinion uh so when i look back at the execution okay so was i right in executing this trade was i right in shorting here um we can say in hindsight yes it was kind of a good it was a kind of a good trade because we got that decrease in price okay but do I feel that this was a good trade? Because there's there's a difference between making money and making good trades. OK, so for me, that's a really big difference. A lot of the time you can make money in trading by being lucky. OK, they're, they're, at the end of the day, we can say you can buy and sell and you can get lucky and it could go the right way. But that's not a good trade. That's just getting lucky. And, you know, in my opinion, technical analysis, there's a, you know, it's it would be impossible for me to do this full time if it was based off of luck. Clearly, there is an edge in this market. Clearly, if you know what you're doing, you can make amazing amounts of money. So in that regards, there is a clear difference between luck and skill in this market, as well as, um, you know, good trades and making money. There's a clear differentiation between that. So although this trade was profitable, was it, well, in this, at this moment, it was, you know, I was in profits, but was it a good trade? Was my execution correct? Um, I do believe there was a few ups and, you know, I cannot say it was a poor trade because I knew what I was trading for. I was looking for the high to be put in within 20 minutes. Obviously, we got that high put in within 24 minutes. Um, and I was also looking at this to be more of a liquidity region. OK, our final push up, we had our bearish divergences on this. We had our volume divergences. We had poor delta. We had poor highs. Um, you know, th there was a mixture of reasons why I was shorting this. Not just <laughs> it wasn't just because it was the first 20 minutes, because that would be like a, a total gamble. So, um, you know, I had my technical reasons behind this. But then on the other side of the coin, uh, I was definitely as when you can just buy as something's falling and it's like catching a falling knife. I was essentially just trying to time the top. And as a trader, I like to say I do not generally like to time the exact top and I don't like to time the exact bottom. What I like to see is the signs of a reversal and then get in on the middle 60 percent of the move. OK, so I'm, I'm happy to not buy the exact bottom. I'm happy to then not sell the exact top. But if I make the middle of the move, then I'm more than happy because 
you know, I just am. Um, so this was a portrait in that regards because I, I was literally trying to time, you know, pretty much the exact top of the move. Um, and consistently, it's, it's difficult to do that. So that was one of the poor reasons why I feel the execution. In hindsight, I could have, you know, instead of trying to time the exact top, you know, get in slightly lower, where I then had a clear invalidation. Because obviously at this point, as the rise is going up, my stop loss is, I trade with soft stop losses. But nevertheless, the, the invalidation of the of the short is, it was, is very difficult to identify in that time, okay? It was more based off of intuition, the way that I would have uh, controlled that trade, closing or, or um, continuing with it okay so in that regards i believe it was a somewhat a poor execution of the trade but i believe the theory behind the trade was okay so i can't beat myself up too much it's what follows is where i personally i got, got annoyed with myself with this trade i just feel i managed it poorly in the coming day uh so yeah i guess now you can re now you realize what i tr took that trade off of trying to you know get in at the highs and then how it you know continued um, so how this continued was we obviously moved, we got our move to the downside, we got our move back up and we got our move back down. I still maintained within this short um, till yesterday. So let me just show you this really quickly. I will just load up this. So I didn't have this one prepared um, and da, 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 I will just try and find you this. I will literally be one second. Yeah, there it is. So uh, this was my then position last night. Okay, so... That was my position that I posted in the group last night. I maintained within the short, okay? And this is where I feel it was a poor trade. So this for me is where it gets into a poor trade. So we obviously got the move back down. Okay, so I maintained my short within all of this price action. Uh, I saw that we were like battling with the top of the channel. There was no reason, because I was expecting this to be more of a swing position. Okay, so I trade with a scalp trading account and then a swing trading account. So I have several accounts. So this one was for me uh, originally going to be a scope trade and then it turned into a swing trade for me uh, as i saw that like, you know we were battling with a point of control we couldn't get above it we couldn't get it back above the channel so uh, for me there was like you know i was happy to maintain within this short we also swing for a pattern the high here and you know got rejected from that so i was like envisioning it to be that uh, more of a swing trade but this is where i got, got psychologically really a uh, poor in my standards okay so we got the drop down where did we drop down to we actually dropped down to uh the session the session point of control which was at 7114 so you can see here we actually load at 7080 well, funnily enough 7080 that was obviously the place where i had my buy walls before this uh, that, that's kind of funny but <laughs> we uh we did bounce off of 7080 again should have kept it going uh, but then uh, what, we, what we can see is we bounced off of that. We bounced off the session point of control. Uh, and imp really importantly was the monthly uh, or the yearly open. OK, and that was at 7,163. So what actually happened was we dropped down through the yearly open. OK, we got a few long lower wicks through the yearly open uh, before you come back up and you reclaim the yearly open and you closed above it, above it on the daily. So then we had our daily and four hour close above it. So if I just show you this on the four hour. You could see that you dropped down and you closed above the yearly open again. So you're closing here at seven, nearly 7,200. There was that would have been definitely the reason to close this short position, okay? Or at least in my regards, at least take a, a, a big percentage of profits. Because what you can see here is you've come back down into a demand area. You've bounced off the demand area. You've closed above the yearly open. There's no reason to hold on to this. In, you know, in my opinion, there would have been no reason for me to hold on to this short. So now I can say to myself, why was I holding on to this short position? Okay, when there's a clear, we're clearly finding support at this zone. And for me, it was emotional uh, of me thinking to myself, you know, it really was my ego getting into air me on this one. Because of the fact I had somewhat, you know, predicted this being a top and that we would fall down. I was so uh, wanting it basically to fall down. Um, you know, I, I let my emotions get the better of me there. I let my emotions get the better of me in the regards of almost like my ego getting in the way that I really was uh, just just really wanted that to have been the top and for it to, you know, fall down essentially. So I can say that this was definitely a poor trade because of my ego, because I did not react to the signs that we were clearly finding support off of the, you know, and those reasons mentioned, primarily the yearly open, as we all know, the yearly open was our really big resistance. As you came through the yearly open, you closed back above. And as I was mentioning to my group yesterday, my exact words in the group were, wait for the daily close, wait to see if we close above the, the yearly open or below the yearly open on the daily close. When we closed above the daily open, there would have been no reason for me to continue in my shorts. The only reason I did 
was simply because of my emotion emotionally uh you know wanting to you know get the high of that trade and in that regards i feel that this was a really poor trade okay so i hope <laughs> as you can kind of tell i suppose maybe i hold myself to a really high standard in trading and so for me to make a trade like this uh, you know, obviously it, it made money, you know, still in it. But nevertheless, it was a poor trade. Okay, I really feel that this was a poor trade. Okay, and um, you know, so then how, how I can say to myself is, is how am I now taking this information, realizing what I done there was poor, and how can I now improve upon that and and make sure it doesn't happen again. Firstly, the first thing that I actually done uh, when I woke up this morning and I saw the rise, I said to myself. Daniel, what, what 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 went on here? Why were you not reacting to the data that you had yesterday? You had you closed your daily. I stayed up for the daily close, obviously being one a.m. I stayed up for the daily close. I did not react to the charts. I just I just kept my short open and um, you know kept it running. And I thought to myself, why did you do that? And you know, I really when I really thought about it, it, it basically my my reasoning was more, more so my ego. Um, so how am I looking to improve that? The th first thing I done was delete everything on my chart. So I literally just thought, you know what? Um, I am clearly got a bias here. Okay, my, bi my bias is clearly influenced by my technical analysis that I've made and the predictions that I've made wanting them to play out rather than, like I've said many times, it's, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about making money. Um, so for me to want to be right more than making money is, is clearly, you know, clearly wake yourself up, Daniel. That's not what you're in this for. So, um, you know, I deleted, so I delete literally everything on my chart, remove everything. OK, and start my chart again. What does this benefit? This is going to benefit me because it's going to remove my past thoughts. It's going to remove my past biases and I will look at the chart in a totally new light now. OK, so I can have no prior uh, influences. I will literally have like a clean chart on my screen. OK, and I feel this is very beneficial indeed because of the fact, you know, just as when we got this really big drop to the downside. OK, yes, it was a big drop. But if you looked at the charts, we were clearly making bullish market structure. There's no reason to short at this point, is there? There's no reason to try and short this because we are moving up really, really healthily. OK, or somewhat healthily, but nevertheless, we're still making bullish market structure. OK, so at, that moment, at this point, there's no like reason in that regards to short. So, um, you know, by starting my chart again, I can remove all biases that I might have had of seeing like, you know, 7,350, 7,400 as, 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 you know, why does this have to be a pivotal top? If the signs are not showing us it's a pivotal top, then, uh, you know, start your chart again, remove the biases and, and trade with what I have now. So that is something that I done. And uh, another thing that I can mention psychologically, which really helps, uh, is the fact, uh, you know, this was a chart that I put out the other day. And how does this chart help with, help with emotions? So as you can see, what I said on this chart here was long or short Bitcoin on this chart. I would short Bitcoin. But what you need to realize this is that this is the inverse chart. So shorting Bitcoin here really means longing Bitcoin. And I did try and hopefully clear up that confusion with my comments with someone asked, you know, if this is, is inverted chart, it's also your answer inverted. Yes, uh, this is the inverted chart. So really it means I would long Bitcoin. So I hope I cleared that up. But nevertheless, um, the reason why you invert the chart is because psychologically you might be really, you know, keen on longing or shorting. But when you flip the chart around, do you still maintain that perspective? So obviously I flipped the, you know, I flipped the chart here. And by saying that I would short Bitcoin down to this support, it really means obviously I would long Bitcoin because um, this is the inverted chart. But the reasons why this inverted chart helps you is because psychologically you might be stuck into a bias when you, you know, the view of the charts in a certain way. And you'll be really surprised how simply inverting the chart can help remove a bias that you have. So that was a bias that I did have. Obviously, that was at 6,700. Uh, but flipping the chart, you know, you would look to short this clearly down to this support region, which is being, you know, really, 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 really well respected. There would be no reason not to do that. And obviously, we did get that move from, you know, 7,000, 6,700 to all the way to 7,400. So clearly, it was, you know, a good short, which obviously clearly is long because of the chart being inverted. But psychologically, that helps remove biases. So that's another tip that you can have there. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. So firstly, um, you know, so reviewing what I like to do with my journals is obviously looking at the trade, looking at where, what went right, looking at where, what went wrong. Uh, realizing to yourself that I think I really want to like emphasize here that we are traders at the end of the day you know everybody is going to take losses you know um, you do never want to be ashamed of taking a loss there's, there's nothing to be ashamed of uh, obviously there is this bit of a stigma in trading where people do not like to talk about losses you know I feel it's really actually important to talk about losses because 
you know you have to you have to really 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 realize that if you cannot handle your losses you you can never handle you you know you can never handle those wins and you don't deserve your wins if you don't uh, you know if you don't take your losses because it's it's part and parcel of trading obviously you know with that emphasis like we have over at chart champions at a psychology section and this is uh beneficial for um yeah, this is beneficial for uh, we have this section to talk about like general health, so your health mentally, as well as like talking about losses, talking about wins, just talking about trading in general. But we feel that there's a really big emphasis on like the psychological and emotional emotional side of trading because it, it's not always just about the technicals. It is you know psychological you know the the the, the number emotions play a massive part in trading. So if you can like master your emotions, so to speak, then you should have like a massive edge already. To be honest. Uh, so yeah there is that as well um so yeah as you can see this is still pulling this is slightly pulling back i believe that 7350 is a really important resistance that we have actually on this chart uh being local point of control being our weekly level obviously we are still below that so um you know, I, I didn't want this to be a technical analysis, but I'd say like your key resistance at the moment is is still seven thousand three hundred and fifty. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see if this reclaims. But I am now going to do all my technical analysis again, start from scratch, and you know work out for me now the next best trade to take. Um, so yeah, I hope that this video has been beneficial for you all. You can see, um, you know, firstly why the importance is of journaling. So I guess there's a few things that I want personally wanted to you know get from this video. Uh, Firstly, I want to do really emphasize that, uh, you know, it's OK to lose a trade. It really doesn't matter uh, as long as you have your risk management on point, as long as overall you've got a good win rate. Uh, you know, taking a loss is, 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 is nothing to worry about. OK. Uh, secondly, I wanted to uh, emphasize to you all, uh, you know, how I go about looking at my trade. So why do I journal? Firstly, I journal because I believe that I can always get better. I'm never at the top of anything in life, be it anything at all i always can improve i can always learn and on top of that uh why do i also journal i like to take statistics from my trades so obviously when i was looking you know i have the statistics that highlights like to be put in within the first 20 minutes clearly there's an edge in knowing that so by like journaling all my past trades i know where that is and you can see we did put in the high at 24 minutes into the day and then we got a four percent drop in price so clearly that edge is still there um and then you know why else do i journal my trades so i can you know see what went right see what went wrong and then thirdly what can i do to if i lost the trade what what went wrong in that trade and how can i improve so this doesn't happen again in this regards it was my emotions getting the better of me really wanting to be right rather than making money crazy very silly indeed how can i improve upon that by really for me deleting my charts because I was holding a bias because of my charts. So I deleted all my charts and now I will start again, do all of my technical analysis again from scratch, holding no bias, holding no predictions and just, uh, you know, take this afresh, so to speak. And the why I'm still in that position, I'm going to debate you know closing or reopening for example after i finish this technical analysis to make a really informed decision as you can see this short is still nice because actually because we're still moving down but nevertheless i will start my charts make an informed decision and then decide am i going to close this am i going to maintain it and um, you know make a proper decision here in the trade um so yeah i hope that this video has been really beneficial and eye-opening somewhat i know that you know in general people do not like to uh, talk about losses people do not like to talk about uh poor trades and you know i'm more more than open to talk about them i hold no uh i have nothing to prove so to speak so my results do the tr do the speaking so in that regards i'm more than happy to do this so if you like this video uh you know please let me know and if if, if you do then i'm happy to do more and uh you know if you are interested in, you know, coming across to Chart Champions, obviously we do uh, chart charts every single day of the week, all day. <laughs> so if you like these sort of uh, charts and talks and, you know, talks about trading and all this, uh, then, uh, yeah, you can come across to uh, Chart Champions and we'll be more than happy to have you within our trading community. Uh, so, yeah, thank you, everybody. Hope that you have a brilliant day and, uh, yeah, enjoy the trading to come. Cheers. Thank you and goodbye.